In just about every episode we do, someone asks us about optics or cameras or whatever, so I thought this would be a good time to talk about it. What you see Marcus filming me with are the big cameras that we use. The camera guy is always behind us, sometimes two camera guys, with those big cameras. You see this little camera? Well, sometimes I will wrap this around a limb and we'll get a frontal shot. And then sometimes we will use this little almost point and shoot camera. It's really a mirrorless camera by Sony. And sometimes I'll have that on a tripod. So we're carrying all kinds of optics that I'm gonna get into and all kinds of cameras. The good news is you usually don't have to deal with this, but if you did, you'd understand why it's so chaotic for us when, when the time comes. And if you saw this episode, this Montana elk episode, that was chaotic. I'm not carrying a lot of gear with me when I'm scouting. I don't have a rifle, I don't have a lot of other things. So I don't mind carrying an 80 millimeter spotting scope and tripod. And that's exactly what this is. This is the 80 millimeter gold ring version that uh, Leupold has. It'll go up to 60 power magnification. So you saw me using this on the scouting day. It requires a pretty big tripod to keep it steady. So then I'll drop down to the next one. And this is kind of my in-between version. This here is the 60 millimeter gold ring from Leupold, and it goes up to a 40 power. If I'm really gonna be hiking it and hoofing it, this one right here, and, and this tripod will, will fit for both of these. This one here, this is another gold ring, it's a 50 millimeter, and it only goes up to 30 power. But it is so lightweight that I can throw it in my pack, and I hardly even know it's there. If I had to pick only one of these three items, the compromise item that I'd pick would be the 60 millimeter gold ring. And then we'll just quickly get into the, the binoculars. You can see that these Mojaves that I have here, they take a beating. Uh, <laughs> anytime your equipment is used in our TV show, in one season, it'll take a year or a, a lifetime worth of abuse. So. These ones here, these are just the, they're a 10 by 42. Um, some people prefer an eight power. They, they call it the BX3. Uh, it's called the Pro, 8, Pro Guide HD Mojave version. Very lightweight, very lightweight. Um, good glass. You always see that we have these in our uh, bino pouches. This one here is by FHF Gear. I always said I'd never own a rangefinder. That was back in the day when uh, I thought they weren't necessary. But now I use this rangefinder as, <laughs> I, I hate to admit it, but it's almost a crutch anymore. Uh, this one here is the RX1200i TBR. It's an angle compensating rangefinder so that if you're shooting at angles up or down, it gives you the true ballistic range. In other words, you don't have to say, oh, do I, how much do I have to hold low for that? Uh, great, lightweight. I calibrate this with my CDS system. So if, if this says 220 yards, I want my dial calibrated to adjust with what the reading is here. The worst thing you could do is be out there and say, oh, they say that that's 300 yards or 300 meters and you calibrate everything to that, but your rangefinder says, no, that's 340 yards or 330 meters or whatever. So when you're out shooting, make sure that your rangefinder and the dials on your scope are calibrated together because this is what you're gonna be counting on out in the field. So for elk hunting, that's what we have for optics and for cameras.